Let's go over some different types of wire repair techniques for automotive applications. When we're repairing wires, it's very important that the connections that we're making are both weather tight and firm. The reason they need to be weather tight is because we need them to be able to resist uh, any type of corrosion that may occur from moisture or anything like that entering the connection. We need them to be able to conduct the current necessary for all of the loads on the circuit to operate normally with little or no resistance. Keep in mind that anytime we add resistance to a circuit, we reduce the available current to each one of the loads in that circuit. Up here are some different types of crimpers. This is a lever action type crimper that we would use for making a connection when we're dealing with non-insulated terminals. You don't want to use these anytime you're working with an insulated terminal because these will just crush the insulation and keep the insulation from sealing against moisture. Right here is a connector uh, crimper that is also used for non-insulated terminals. You can use this with an insulated terminal but the problem is, is that it also damages the insulation and so you're not going to have a weatherproof connector. This right here is probably the worst of all of them and this is the type that's most commonly found in a toolbox. It has provisions for insulated terminals and non-insulated terminals. The problem is, is that none of these really give you a good crimp so the connection ends up being a little bit loose. That looseness increases the resistance in the circuit that you're working with. This is a pair of lever action type wire strippers. I like these a lot. They work really well when we're underneath dashes and we're working in close quarters. There's solder. This is an insulated type terminal. This is a butt connector which means that it will butt two pieces of wire together. I really strongly recommend you avoid the use of this type of connector and I'll show you why in a minute. Right here is a non-insulated connector. This connector right here will make a very good connection but it's a little more of a pain in the butt to work with than this insulated butt connector is. When we're working with these we have to keep in mind that we need to keep any water or moisture for being able to enter the connection. That means that when we're finished making the connection we have to use a piece of shrink tubing like this to seal that connection against the intrusion of moisture. Finally we got a little bit of wire. I think everybody's familiar with wire. It's very important when you're making a connection that you make sure that the gauge of wire that you're using is the same or greater than the gauge of the wire you're replacing. The reason for that is that resistance increases each time that we reduce the diameter of the wire. So if I put a smaller wire in a circuit than what's already there, I'm increasing the resistance in that circuit. We already know we don't want to do that. So let's go over a couple of these crimps real quickly. I'm going to start by trimming off a piece of wire. Now I'm going to use the strippers to strip a little bit of that wire off. So now the insulation has been freed up. Got some bare wire. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to use this blue terminal connector. It's a butt style connector. And I'm going to use the non-insulated blue crimper right there. Just like that. Give it a little squeeze. Actually, you need to give it a lot of squeeze. All right. Now you can see how it's crushed down on the wire. That looks pretty good. Strip another section of wire here. And insert that into the butt connector. There we go. Same thing. Let's give it a little squeeze. All right. So there's your basic butt terminal connector. Okay, this is an insulated terminal, but you'll notice that it's not weather tight. 
It will insulate against shorts, but it will not insulate against weather. Let's see if we could pull it apart very easily, able to pull it apart. So you can see that's not really the ideal connection. Short term, got to use it because you're stuck in the backwoods somewhere and there's a guy with a chainsaw coming after you, great, use it. If you have the time to do it right though, do it right. Let's go ahead and strip a little wire off on this side. All right. Since I already have this piece of wire that it's free to use because I was able to pull it out of that butt terminal connector, let's go ahead and use one of these non-insulated connectors. Slide that like that. We're going to use these pliers right here. You see where I'm crushing it at? Right there, the non-insulated crush. Okay, there's my crimp. And if you look at that, you can see that's a really good crimp. It's tight. It's not going to pull off real easily. Let's go ahead and put a slice of uh, heat shrink tubing down over my wire before I make my connection. It's very easy to forget the heat shrink tubing. So just get in the habit of putting it on before the connection. If you don't, you're probably going to have to cut the wire apart to get it on there. All right, now going to use these crimpers again. Nice tight squeeze. Bingo! Nice connection. It's solderless so it can be done anywhere that you might have concerns about having heat and it's very tight. What it is not is insulated against shorts and weather. So we're going to go ahead and put that little chunk of heat shrink tubing right there. I'm going to use a micro torch to melt that heat shrink tubing. Now, a micro torch isn't always the best tool for the job, but it's quick, it's efficient, and it does what needs to be done. You want to use a heat gun usually. The problem with the heat gun is that it's very difficult to direct the heat and keep from damaging other wires or components in the area. Alrighty, so there we go. I've got a non-insulated terminal connector in there. I have some heat shrink tubing around it. The heat shrink tubing keeps this sealed against shorts and weather. And it's extremely durable. Very, very tight. Alright, let's go ahead and cut this again. Strip it. Get another non-insulated terminal connector here. Okay, I'm going to put that on the wire. And let's use this guy right here. This crimper is the one that I use the most commonly because it gives absolutely the best crimp that we can put in these wires. The problem with this crimper is that it's a pain in the butt to use. You can put the terminal in there like that kind of hold the terminal, then insert the wire into the terminal, crimp it. it, gives an extremely durable crimp. That's really, really tight. Gives it almost a nice machine finish. Let's cut ourselves off another chunk of shrink tube. Put this on the wire. Strip this side. Put the terminal in the connector or the crimper. Wire in the terminal. Crush. Heat shrink tubing over it. Shrink the tubing. Beautiful. There we go. That's a really good connection right there. Of the three that we just did, that's far and away the strongest.